Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. Um, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, what I wanted to talk about is something that uh, is on my mind that uh, what people are trying to achieve, what people don't care about, what other people, the goals that they're setting, you know, uh, going off a little bit off track, I was into gardening. And uh, when you're into gardening, which like in the neighborhood I lived in, um, in fact, you could almost say the town I lived in, nobody had a nicer garden than I had. But in order to achieve that very nice garden, um, it was, and when I say it was a nice garden, I'm, I'm not just saying that. The, my garden was uh, in magazines like the Chicagoland Garden Magazine. My garden was in that. Uh, also some people from uh, like Better Homes and Garden came. And in order to uh, get your garden in a magazine, our uh, conservancy, the Garden Conservancy, uh, to recognize your garden as one of those gardens to be uh, recognized. It's very competitive. It, it, I, and there is a correlation, I'm getting to the point, there is a correlation between uh, gardening and aquariums, believe it or not very, very close. Whenever you do gardening, uh, I had an English garden and you have to set aside thousands of dollars every year because the garden is constantly changing. You may start out with a lot of sunshine, which is easy to make a garden when you have bright daylight. But as the garden matures, trees mature, that which needed a lot of sunshine, plants that required a lot of light, no longer have the light available to them. So you're constantly changing. Then you have plants that wind up dying. Uh, you could wait 15 years for a plant to become great and all of a sudden it dies. Winter comes, boars attack it that you didn't realize, killing off the plant. Uh, insects, there's constantly a battle with a garden. That's why people don't do it. It requires a lot of work a lot of expense and I always considered my garden to be a mom and pop garden because it was uh, just something that I did and if uh, you needed something professionally done like you know with stones or something yeah you could hire a landscaper but it took thousands and thousands of dollars every year to have an outstanding garden and every year we would have hundreds and hundreds of people visit the garden. And we got, uh, we also got recognized by the garden conservatory. And these gardens that you're competing with to show and to be recognized uh, are usually high end gardens that uh, people have plenty of money, uh, usually. In Chicago, they could be on the Gold Coast or somewhere very expensive to live. And like I said, these people had gardeners that would take care of their gardens all the time. So they really didn't invest uh, their own time as much as just hiring a gardener to do all the gardening for them. And they had the money. Anything went bad, the gardener would come in, he'd, he'd straighten it out. It was an everyday thing. And some of these very rich people, uh, when, if they would be like on, let's say, Pontour or, or Garden Walk or something like that, they'd have their gardener right there available to talk to people of what they were doing. Me, I had a garden that I did myself. So it consumed a lot of time, energy, and it's very, very costly. And I did remember when I sold my house, the biggest number one complaint was uh, too much work. 
right there, constantly. Too much work, too much work, too much work. <clears throat> people, people love looking at beautiful gardens. Believe me, I had people from all over. Uh, even the United Kingdom would come over because I had an English garden. And they said how beautiful it was and it would motivate them and uh, to do gardening. And they did say one thing. They said, uh, we Americans have these big yards and we just waste our yards. Basically, we don't want to deal with gardening. We don't want to deal with trees. We don't want to deal with anything that requires work. And it was nice to see an English garden uh, like I had here in the States and that it was a mom and pop garden, meaning that I didn't have unlimited income to make it look nice. How does this correlate with aquariums? Well, for you old timers, you'll know exactly what I mean, but for you beginners that are out there, uh, this is something that you get a perception of that I can do it. Like, like you look at aquarium book like this or um, a mono books. You look at these, you look at the pictures inside of these books. Uh, today, I guess people don't really read books. Okay. Anyhow, I got lots of these books and you look at the pictures in these books. They're all glossy pictures. They're absolutely beautiful aquariums. Okay. They're, they're beautiful. Uh, just like garden. You walk into a, a garden, but you have no concept of what it takes to achieve that goal. Just like you look at the amount of books. Me, you don't have any concept what it achieved to get into a magazine. You have no concept of people coming over and scrutinizing your garden. Is it good enough to even be put into a magazine? You know, and the money and time that's involved into creating such a thing and making everything just look right in the right proportions. And basically, it, it correlates with aquariums immediately. A lot of people go and they look at such books. Today, it probably isn't so much books. It's so much uh, probably on the Internet now. And you look at these beautiful aquariums or you go to a, uh, a, a show that uh, I've been to lots of shows where they have aquariums and stuff like that in competition or you may even go to a pet store and you see these beautiful tanks well they have a plethora of available things to them you know they have uh, all kinds of different wood branches that may be available, different stones that may be available. Cost is of no option. And they sell plants, and therefore, they have plenty of plants. But just like terrestrial gardening, aquatic gardening is very expensive. And it takes a lot of time and work. No matter what someone's going to tell you, it takes time and work. Plants are going to grow, overshadow another plant. You'll have to constantly be trimming. You don't achieve such beautiful aquariums with not doing any work. There is a time in everybody's aquarium, just like in my aquariums that I've had, where they were at their precipice, and they were absolutely perfect. And I took pictures of them because they were at the point where you had your lotuses gr growing just perfect, and everything was perfect. But it didn't last long because other plants are growing faster than this plant is growing. Unless you plan on constantly keeping up with it, and I mean constantly trimming, keeping up with it. If this is your little garden in life and you don't mind spending the money, the time, and trouble to achieve that goal, that goal is only going to come very quickly and leave as quick as it came because plants never stop growing. You're going to have plants that live. You're going to have plants that die. You're going to have, you're going to wonder why this plant died and this plant is doing so good. Uh, it, it, it is a battle to get that perfect aquarium. And I think the old timers know that you will see, you'll see a lot of tanks where people have a lot of tanks. 
They have a lot of uh, tank cover plants, whether it be uh, uh, any plant that would cover it. floaters. You'll see a lot of that in aquariums because the reason they're putting all those floaters in is to cover up the light so they don't wind up getting algae, so they let the light kind of penetrate through that. It stops them from having algae problems because they have to have the lights on. So anytime you have lights, you're going to have algae. And a lot of people have always made comments, oh, I had to turn down my lights so I don't get as much algae. Or a lot of people will put floating plants of different sorts in their aquarium to float on top. These don't usually work if you have a skimmer or they usually don't work if you have a wear because it will be sucked into the skimmer or wear and just suck up your your plants and you'll be wasting your money. But you'll see a lot of breeders with these plants and that is to help prevent from the tank just going full-blown algae. Uh, you see, you'll see it a lot. I know you've seen it. I've seen it in this so it's very rare to see a non-breeder or a person that has maybe 20 tanks or aquariums in their basement or garage, whatever they may have, to really see them without kind of floating plants. To have plants that look as good as in a mono book here, you know, to have that much beauty in their aquariums because it would occupy so much of their time and they have 20 tanks to deal with. Most of the time you see uh, on videos and stuff, people have large productions, will have all kinds of branches, all kinds of, all kinds of uh, hardscaping at their availability, more than what we have. We have to pay for that. And not a lot of people have a lot of money to start out with all the plants that they're going to need. They just don't have that kind of money. Me, when I do my hardscaping, and I put my plants in, I may have to go through several months of getting the hardscaping and affording the plants, what plants I want to put where. And as time goes on, you soon learn plants you want to stay away from that a lot of people may use in their aquariums. Just like with terrestrial garden, you find out that uh, they may have a perennial like foxglove, for example, but it's classified as perennial, but it only lasts three years. And then you plant it, it's great, and it looks great, and then after three years, it's gone. And it's like, oh, what happened? I thought it was a perennial. And you'll see perennials even have an expiration date. Peony bushes, you know, may last 25, 50 years. Your trees may have expiration dates. A lot of, a lot of work has to go into gardening, even if you're doing aquatic gardening. A lot of work has to achieve those goals. You know, anyone says, oh, no, it doesn't cost that. Oh, well, those are people with money and time. I do not have the time to spend to make my aquariums look absolutely perfect, like they're out of a magazine. You know, they look that way. At one time, they will be perfect. And then they change from that on because the plants keep growing. The only choice you have is either start pulling plants out or changing your plants, changing your ideas, or having CO2 to have the plants grow, uh, really pumping in the CO2 fertilizers to get your plants to grow. But as your plants grow, they become a problem. You keep cutting them down, they grow back, you cut them down, they grow, and then all of a sudden they don't grow back after you cut them down. And you realize, oh, what did I do wrong? You know, oh, I... I, I had this Ludwig over here, and, and it's not growing anymore. It, it was beautiful before, and, and I trimmed it, and now it doesn't seem to be growing back. This is what happens in aquariums. So lots of times, trying to achieve that picture-perfect book aquarium, it just doesn't exist for most people. It's too expensive. It's way, way too much work. And to achieve the photographs you see like in the Yamano book or any of the books that show planted, a lot of your tropical fish hobbyist books and stuff that show these planted aquariums, how beautiful they are, you got to remember that's a lot of work. 
And of course, it deceives you as Aquarius because you look at these and say, oh, they have no algae and look how perfect they are. I want to achieve that. Well, you you can, but you be, be better prepare yourself for a lot of work and money, expense. I don't care what anybody says. It takes money, time to achieve that. And you're going to have to, some people don't mind. They don't mind putting in the time every week, every other day, looking, trimming, deciding what's going to look right, how it's growing, how much CO, they don't care. They don't care how much CO2 they're going to uh, put into their tank. Expense means nothing to them. This is because that is their goal of what they want to achieve. So the reason I'm doing this video basically is to tell most of the newcomers out there, don't sweat the small stuff. If you're trying to achieve perfection, okay, uh, it, it's going to be a rocky road and you're really going to have to put a lot of time and effort into it. Therefore, a lot of people start shrinking their aquariums. Don't wind up going to your aquarium pet store that you may have a favorite and you look at their tanks and they're beautiful. Not to, they hire a staff to do that. The manager says, hey, that tank's not looking good. Go over there and trim it up, clean it up. And they go over there and they have an abundance of plants to replace plants or do whatever they need to do. Remember, they have a plethora of plants available to them. You don't. You have to run to your local store. You have to see, well, what do they have available? You're going to have to order them online. And then when you order them online, they send you a plant and it's not up to your expectations. And you may look at the plant saying, well, I would have never bought this plant. This plant is garbage. It happens with these online stores. Remember, they're trying to sell all their plants. You know, you can't cherry pick what you want at a lot of these online stores with plants. You can't cherry pick. They're going to send you the plant that they have available and make a sale. You may look at it and say, man, this thing, I paid this much for this garbage plant. It happens a lot. Don't think it doesn't. It happens a lot. I know I'm going to get comments up. Well, I've ordered from that and I've never been. Yeah. Well, for every person that's successful, there probably is a person that's a failure too, because uh, like Jacob's Aquarium, he explained such things that being in that business, you're not going to please everybody all the time. All you're trying to do is just please most of the people, but you can't please all of them, especially when you have a mail order business. It just can't work that way. And the reason I'm doing this is, is don't get your hopes. And I, I know I've said this before so high that you think your tank is going to look like that on the internet or you're going to have a mono tank, uh, you know, uh, it's going to look that good because it's the same way with gardening, you know, terrestrial gardening. Unless you're willing to put a lot of time in, a lot of money in, you're going to have a nice garden. But it's not going to be a garden that's ever going to, uh, the conservatory is going to recognize that they're going to bring people to your home to visit your garden, which mine was one that they actually came. You're never going to make it to that because you're competing against people that have unlimited resources. Okay. It's the same way with trying to get in a magazine. You're competing with people that have unlimited resources just about. And they don't mind spending thousands of dollars on their garden, where you, on the other hand, may say, oh, I'd rather go on a vacation, you know, than spend thousands of dollars on my garden. It's the same way with the aquarium. You don't, you're going to get some algae. Look at it as that's part of it. You're not going to achieve, unless you're one of those people that have plenty of income and everything and you don't mind putting in the time, trouble, buying the equipment, buying the CO2, it'll work out great for you then. But for those of you like me, like if you're not going to use any CO2, um, expect what is the outcome as 
you've achieved as much as you could achieve with the income that you spent and the plants, how they're growing, you're going to have to accept it. And a lot of people are very happy with what they got. No, they don't look like the magazine. And I've shown pictures of that. They don't look like the magazine. But you know what? They're happy campers. And that's all that matters in this hobby. To be a happy camper. Don't, don't get all upset over everything just because it doesn't look like a magazine. And I know a lot of people are trying to achieve that. Don't worry about it. You know, it, it's, it's, I mean, because you look at these aquariums and you're lucky if they got 15 little neons in it. And that's it. Because, ooh, ooh, if I, if I put too many fish in, I'm going to feed them too much and I'm going to end up with elk. You're so scared to do anything. So you're not going to see a tank full of fish, which this is what this hobby is about. If you want a water garden, you're going to have a water garden. If you want a beautiful aquascape, you're going to have. But don't forget to look at all these aquariums on the Internet with a grain of salt. They've achieved that because they do not mind putting in the time, the trouble, buying the lights, advocating that you need, uh, you know, four of these $300, $400 lights over your aquarium. They don't care. They either got some of the products free or they have an unlimited, you know, pocketbook to dip into. So that's why I wanted to say this because a lot of new hobbyists, they're trying to achieve what they're seeing on the internet or what's in a book if you still look at books. And uh, that's harder than what you think. And yes, I have achieved it with my aquariums, but that precipice doesn't last long. You achieve it and you look at it and say, wow, this, this looks just like the magazine. But you know what? That time moves on and then your aquarium, the plants start growing more and more. And do I want to tear out the plants? Do I, do I want to keep? Uh, I don't. Okay. I'm not too lazy. And I don't really care if, you know, I have a little bit of algae or something. I, you know, I'm not worried. I, I don't sweat the small stuff. And I think you ought to do that also. Don't sweat the small stuff. The thing you want to do is make sure your animals are good. You're not having overabundance of algae in the aquarium. Um, that's all the advice I can really give you. Old timers already know this. And they're like, yeah, yeah. You know, we've been through it. We've been there. We've done it. You know, we don't want to spend a lot of money. And maybe we don't want to put a lot of plants floating on top of our aquarium to block out the light. Uh, we'd like to, you know, see our tank. So I'm just telling you that because sometimes uh, people are trying to achieve a little more than, uh, well, they're biting off more than they can chew is what I'm saying. Don't worry about it. Have fun with the hobby. Have as much fun as you can what, you're, what you want to spend in the hobby. Some people, like uh, especially with saltwater aquariums, you know, the sky's the limit. You know, you're going to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on an aquarium, live rock, whatever you're going to be using, and it's part of the hobby. And a lot of the saltwater hobbyists will even tell you that don't get into it if you're not willing to spend the money. Just stay out of it. It's expensive. The equipment is expensive. What you have to do, how the tank has to be broken, the different products you're doing, the, the what you have to add in that you have to uh, add into the aquarium, your trace elements and stuff like this on a constant basis. It's part of the hobby. It's part of the expense. Uh, when I had my mini reef, I got rid of it because it just was too much work and too much expense. And I sold the whole tank off and just, that's it. I'll just stick with fresh water. It's just too much. And I don't want to, I don't want to be a slave to my aquarium. I guess that's what I'm kind of telling you. Don't be a slave to your aquarium. Ease up a little bit. Okay. Don't be a slave. Don't, don't, everything doesn't have to be picture perfect. I know you may want it that way, but I think what you're looking for is you don't want to put the time, you don't want to put the trouble in, you don't want to put the expense in, but you want the picture-perfect aquarium like the Amano Aquarium. And that, unfortunately, 
takes a lot of time, a lot of trouble, a lot of expense on your part to achieve that. Now, I know we're always going to get the person who is going to be the wonder person who, oh, well, I didn't spend that much and I had this beautiful... You're always going to get the exception to the rule. But the rule is, just like my 90-gallon, it's not perfect. It's full of plants. It's, it looks like a jungle. A lot of people say, oh, I like that. I don't put a lot of time and trouble into that tank. My goldfish aquarium in the same way. I'm not going to put in tons and tons of my time into it to make sure everything is perfect. All the algae is not there. I mean, the lights are on from my goldfish tank. The lights are on for, what, 11 o'clock to 10 o'clock at night. You're going to get some algae, but it's not out of control. It looks natural to me. Basically, is what I'm telling you. I know everybody wants that beautiful aquarium that you're seeing on the internet when they're showing it, but those people have unlimited resources. You don't, and it takes a lot to achieve that. You may get it for a short time. Be grateful that you did it for a short time and got that perfect aquarium. After that, it is going to change, just like terrestrial garden. Things are going to get bigger, this, that. There's so many variables that are going to start changing on you. So accept what Mother Nature gives you, okay? But if you only want like 15 little fish, 15 little tetras in your tank, and, you know, you got a 20 or 30 or 50-gallon tank or 100-gallon tank, and that's all you want in there, uh, you can have that too. But just remember, it takes a lot of time, a lot of trouble, money, expense. And I, I think it takes more time and trouble that people want to really admit to it when they show it on the Internet to everybody, trying to get everybody motivated and buying plants and this, that. Remember, those are all designed also to get you to buy more and more and more and more. Okay, and then you learn certain plants that you're not going to deal with anymore. You're going to wind up getting plants that you know grow. They seem to exist. They seem to do okay. They're not trouble. They don't require you to constantly prune them and trim them. Uh, you're, you're soon maybe going to fall in that category than the person who's constantly trimming, constantly cleaning, constantly sucking dirt out of the plants, uh, you know, if that's what you want, if that's part of your hobby, that's fine. But uh, it's not for everybody. So that's the only advice I can give you, especially newbies that come into it. Uh, very few people I have seen achieve these beautiful aquariums, unless they're at shows or something, and then they got plenty of resources, more than what you want to spend. Because this stuff's expensive, even for fresh water. It's expensive, and a lot of people can't afford it. So I hope you enjoy the video. Until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Don't forget to subscribe. I uh, Leave a comment what you think. Am I wrong? Am I right? Uh, what I have seen, and, and really, look at the videos. Look, look at videos. You'll see tanks that are not so great, and... Uh, these people, basically that's what you see. That's basically what the aquarium is. They're, they're good, but they're not show quality of that perfect Dutch aquarium that you may see are, are in a mono aquarium, are the ones that are in Tropical Fish Hobbyist books and stuff like this, are some of the people who have YouTubes that have unlimited resources and you'll see that they have a, you know, a whole plethora of rocks and, and, and wood and everything else that they, you don't have that. You know, you're going to do the best you can. So until next time, thank you very much for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.